Here's a typical letter that you'd receive. You'd get this in your email, and it really just says, hey, um, there's something wrong with your account. In this case, I think they're telling them that uh, somebody has been messing with their account from outside of the country. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to freak you out. They're trying to make it seem like something bad is happening to your account, so you need to address it immediately. And their hope is that you'll click on the link before you really think about it. And of course, when you click the link, then they want you to enter in confidential information and, and fall for it. These scams are really easy to, to, to stop. All you have to remember is any link or any email you ever receive that's from eBay, PayPal, Amazon, your credit union, anything like that, if there are any links, just don't click them. It, it just makes it that simple. If you don't click the link, you are never going to fall vulnerable to these attacks. A lot of times what people will do or hackers will do is they'll register a domain that's very similar to the real domain. So if it's sdccu.com, I might register SD cccu.com and hope that you won't notice the extra C in there when you click on it. And so you, you want to be careful because the, the hover over definitely helps, but it, just because it looks legitimate, sometimes it isn't. So just be cautious on it. Um, and, uh, and the other thing you can do, if you receive something and they say, hey, there's a problem with your account, pick up the phone and just call them. You know, just call whoever the organization is that's saying there's a problem because ultimately you're gonna to need to talk to them because if there's something really wrong with your account, you don't wanna be messing with email. Email's a mess. Just, just pick up the phone, call them and say, hey, I was told there's something wrong with my account. What is it? And they're either gonna say, yes, there is, or no, there's not. And don't call the phone number that's in the email because that's a lot of times, that actually kind of leads into my next one. And that's uh, vishing. And, and vishing has become popular because everybody's figured out phishing. And what vishing is, is vishing is when you take the kind of phishing concept, but you take it to the phone. So you're actually going to see a video in just a minute. And basically what a criminal will do is they'll call up and they'll leave you a voicemail message and say, hey, there's something wrong with your account. Call back because you've got problems. And then they'll leave you an 800 number and the hope is that you'll call back. And I'll, and I'll play the video and then kind of go over it after the video. To the bad guy, a dumpster isn't just a garbage can. It's a potential treasure trove of information. Something as simple as a discarded post-it note with a phone number scribbled on it is just like gold. Jim showed us by going to a financial institution we won't name and inspecting their dumpster, finding very promising leads. Awesome. That's the perfect one. I've got a phone number. In this case, I got a phone number with a name right there and an address right there. I've got two phone numbers actually and a name. I've got two names actually. But for this unscientific experiment, Jim worked with the American Credit Union to test their customers seeing if they would be susceptible to this type of scam. We have to make sure that our members are educated and they know what to look for so they don't fall victim. We would hope that people are going to be suspicious. They should realize that any financial institution already has this information. Jim was given six phone numbers of America customers that are friends or family of employees. <laughs> then, from a hotel room, Jim began making phone calls with only his cell phone, the list of phone numbers, and a script sounding official. So, this is Jim's giving call reference ID number is one uh, regarding your primary account. Uh, when you receive this message, can you please give us a call back toll free 1877? Then he waited to see how many people would believe his ruse and call back. Within an hour, the phone rang. This is Jim. For security purposes, this call is being recorded. How may I help you? Are you good? Regarding my account? And for security purposes, can I verify your social security number? Uh, That's not coming up. Uh, what's your primary account number? Uh, see, all the five. five. Okay, that brought it up. Okay, great. All that's been happening on this account is your address has gotten messed up. So all I need to do is just verify that and uh, everything. Here, let me give it to you. The one Social security number, gave me his account number, gave me his address, and he gave me his name. And that's really all you need to ruin somebody's life. Another caller did get suspicious, but it was too late. Yeah, Jim, uh, you left a message at my home phone, I believe. For security purposes, can I verify your social security number? Uh, What's your primary account number? Okay, Jim, I don't mean to, I don't mean to sound uh, skeptical, uh -huh. but how do I know you are with America? Where you asked for my social security number, and then that all of a sudden did you want my account number? And I have no way of verifying who you are. We then informed Herb of our test. His suspicions came in. 
they should have come in just before, but I got the one thing that I needed. The one thing he could not ever undo was his social security number. Herb realized that as well. I was caught off guard. It took me a few seconds to, to figure out something wasn't right, but it was too late, luckily. It was just a test. Three out of the six customers fell victim to Jim's test. Three others were suspicious and didn't give their information. A 50% success rate for a potential crook. You know, an organization can spend so much on the security of an internal system, um, but the more dollars they spend on the education of the consumer, the higher success rate that we're going to have of stopping these types of scams. And it always comes back down to just awareness. And, you know, I'm not teaching somebody how to break in. I'm hopefully teaching people how to protect themselves from that person that might try to break in. You can also do this through more of a random attack. That one was done where I left voicemails. If they call and just get you on the phone, it'll still do the same thing. They'll just call up and say, hey, I'm calling security department. It doesn't have to have you call back. They'll try to catch you quickly. The minute you answer the phone, they'll try to catch you when you don't really have a chance to think about what's happening and they'll go, there's a problem with your account. You know, somebody's attacking it right now. You're being hacked into, blah, blah, blah. We need to get you to verify who you are. And you're just like, oh my gosh. And all you want to do is try to solve the problem. So you'll immediately give them that information. And then later you'll think back and go, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but it, it happens so quick. So what you gotta remember is that when this is happening, you gotta always stop. Like no matter what, it'll always get resolved. Whether somebody's stealing money out of your account or whether they've you know, bought stuff that they weren't supposed to buy on your credit cards, all of it can be fixed. What you need to do is just always remember, don't just jump into it. Also, a lot of times you can receive emails and it'll be the exact same scam, but it'll be in an email. They'll say, hey, there's a problem with your account. For security purposes, we won't give you a link because we know that you might think that that's phishing or something along those lines. So what we've done is we provided our 800 number that you can call so you can have a secure conversation. And it's the same thing. What I recommend on those is to make sure you pick up the phone and call. And what you can do is just pull your, your wallet out or your purse and uh, take your debit card out. And on the back of your debit card, if you're, if you're a member here of this credit union, on the back of your debit card is a phone number. That toll-free number is a guaranteed number to this facility. You will get a hold of somebody you can trust at that number. And so if the voicemail was real, if somebody sent you an email, whatever it is, if you call that number that's the legitimate number and say, hey, I got this message or whatever, they're going to either say, yeah, it's okay, you can call that number, or they're going to say, we have no idea what that is. Thank you for letting us know. We're going to try to you know, warn everybody else.